In this comparative study, I will be examining shoplifters directed by Hirokazu Koreeda in 2018 and the Florida Project directed by Sean Baker in 2017. It's worthwhile comparing these two films with Marxist film theory because both tackle lower class familial dynamics and are set in countries with similar socioeconomic contexts. But those countries have drastically different cultures, meaning analyzing differences between these films can provide insight into specifically how culture affects the way directors promote social change. I argue that Koreeda uses his portrayal of lower class familial dynamics and shoplifters to promote change for the general lower class community in Japan, whereas Baker uses his portrayal of such and the Florida Project to promote change for children of lower class communities in America. These differences and intentions can be seen via comparing how each director used screenwriting, editing, and performance. But before then, two important pieces of context. In the 1920s, the Communist Party had just come into power at the Soviet Union, with their ideological foundation being Marxism. Marxism is a philosophy founded by Karl Marx that provides theories about how economic conditions such as class divide can cause social phenomena like the ruling class's exploitation of the lower class. Influenced by this ideological shift, the budding Soviet film industry grew political too. For instance, Soviet filmmakers began using cinema as a medium to spread Marxist ideas. And amongst them, individuals like Sergei Eisenstein began developing the Marxist film theory, a lens of viewing films in which the analyst focuses on how films provide insights about class, like the effects of wealth differences on the individuals, question assumptions about class, and promote change related to class. Both Shoplifters and The Florida Project are set in the late 2010s, with the former in Japan's Tokyo surrounding a family with inadequate income shoplifting to get by, and the latter in America's Florida surrounding the adventures of a six-year-old who lives with her mother at a motel neighboring Orlando's Disneyland. During that time, both countries were led by the right-wing leaders Shinzo Abe and Donald Trump, who significantly cut welfare programs and avoided addressing lower-class struggles. Partially as a result, in 2018, 15.4% of Tokyo's population and 13.6% of Florida's lived in poverty. In terms of crime, Florida's world-renowned amusement parks attracted massive amounts of tourists, which led to increases in related crimes such as scams, prostitution, and narcotics, whereas Japan's crime rates was conversely one of the lowest in the world. Furthermore, the two countries differed in their familial cultures. Research shows that Japanese parents tend to view their own parents as role models, adopt more traditional gender roles, and believe parents and children should learn from each other. On the other hand, American parents often want to become better parents than their own, consider equality key to marriage, and encourage their children to be more independent. In other words, Japanese families have more traditional values and emphasize maintaining familial bonds, whereas American families value rising above traditions and independence. And now, back to the original thesis. In Shoplifters, the screenplay intentionally develops individual dynamics within the family and explores their moral ambiguities in the process. This is achieved in screenwriting by creating scenarios where specific characters are together. For instance, here, after stealing fishing rods, Osamu talks to Shota about trading Yuri, the girl Osamu abducted, as his actual sister. This then allowed the screenwriter to include a scene where they have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, ending up with Shota opening up to Yuri. These two scenes concisely demonstrated the strengthening bond between three characters. However, analyzing the situation more critically, one can interpret it as Osamu coercing Shota into accepting an abducted child as his actual sister, leading Shota to teach Yuri theft and perpetuate a cycle of crime and misguided morality. Similar dynamics occur throughout the film, such as with how the grandmother approves of Aki working in the sex industry for its pay and they demonstrate how, though there is sincere love within this make-pretend family, the actions they encourage each other to do as a result of their economic circumstances can often be immoral and coerced. On the other hand, the Florida Project screenplay depicts a similar toxic dynamic but through scenes that underplay its significance, instead focusing on the child's perspective. For instance, the scene where Haley first brought home a customer for prostitution is a short one, starting and ending with Moody's perspective in the bathroom, focusing on her limited understanding of the situation. Furthermore, beforehand there was scarcely any foreshadowing for this event either. 
This is the obscurity with which the screenplay also revealed other cases when Haley involved Mooney for crimes such as theft and scamming. Like how Corita demonstrated the toxic dynamic between Osamu and Shota, Baker demonstrated how Haley makes Mooney participate in unethical behaviors through creating scenarios with them together, but the brevity and vagueness of those events makes them feel unimportant. Instead, the screenplay allotted a lot more time for inconsequential moments between Mooney and her friends, such as when she and Scooty ate ice cream at the Magic Castle's lobby. In other words, the screenplay developed the child's social dynamics more than her familial dynamics. By doing so, Baker provides more character development for Mooney, but neglects plot development, directing the audience's attention away from the toxic mother-daughter relationship towards the latter's personality and perspective, which makes Mooney a character the audience can more strongly empathize with. These disparate styles of screenwriting can likely be attributed to differences in cultural context. To promote social change for lower class Japanese people, one has to tackle the most tightly bonded units in their culture, families. Japanese culture isn't one which permits individuals to just detach from their entire family, so to truly improve the lives of the lower class, it can't just solely help the children. Conversely, due to the relatively lesser importance individuals assign to family, in modern American culture, it's more acceptable and feasible to just focus on enacting change for children in lower-class families. Shoplifter's editing is slow-paced, allowing the audience to feel immersed and notice details that demonstrate the familial dynamics. For instance, in the scene after the grandmother's death, the editor lingered on this shot of Nobuyo telling Osamu not to cremate her because that'd be too expensive, then mash cut it to the next shot. It's the length of this shot that allows the audience to viscerally feel Nobuyo's cold assertiveness and the character's disregard for the grandmother's death. The screenwriting discusses the nuanced role of familial influence, but it's the editing that allows the audience to process and empathize with that influence. The Florida Project, on the other hand, includes more short shots connected by jump cuts, which complements the screenplay and sacrifices immersion for realism. For instance, in this scene, the editor cuts from the middle of our conversation directly to the end of it. As a result, the film often is not immersive nor focused on details, making it feel more random and trivial, which complements the screenplay's focus on the child's perspective. However, unlike screenwriting, the editing uniquely gives the film a documentary style. Documentaries work with unplanned footages, and therefore often don't have satisfying match cuts that makes the film feel immersive. That's the imperfection that makes documentaries so realistic, and that's what Baker repeatedly does, blurring the lines between fiction and reality. In other words, though both films' editing evoke an emotional impact in the viewer, Shoplifters does that through immersion, whereas The Florida Project more so does that through its visceral realism. In Shoplifters, because of the intricate screenplay and immersive slow editing, each actor's performance must be a lot more precise, whereas the documentary-style editing and shallow-focused screenplay of the Florida Project allows for more improvisational performances. We can see this by comparing a scene depicting theft in each film. In the first scene of Shoplifters, the actors portray a very complex process with details that get referenced later on, as well as provide information about the father-son dynamic through their facial expressions and body language. For instance, the way Osamu gestures at Shota with a stern face indicates the unbalanced power dynamic between the two. On the other hand, in the Florida project, the whole process is executed with minimal intention. The expressions and blockings aren't restrained or deliberate, complementing the documentary style editing. Baker even said in an interview that, I encourage improvisation and she has the skill to do it if she wants. Though technically the directorial choice of having Haley literally push Mooney around does suggest the parent's dominance over the child, like Koreeda establishes, in shoplifters, the jump cuts and disorganized blocking makes that dynamic a lot more subtle. However, regardless of style, actors in each film portray their roles incredibly realistically. They behave very closely as people in real life do. And whether that's generated out of skill or intuition, it makes these characters and in turn their stories believable. The problems they represent become no longer impersonal and inconsequential as right-wing political leaders of that time like Abe or Trump wanted to portray them to be but rather real and meriting change. In summary, Shoplifters used nuanced screenwriting, immersive editing, and precise acting to depict the complex familial dynamics in Japanese society, advocating for the lower class in general. Whereas the Florida Project uses a perspective-centered screenplay, documentary-style editing, and improvisational acting to depict 
familial dynamics in American society, advocating for lower-class children specifically. 